before the OU Iowa State game on Saturday, Jacob Park, the starting quarterback for the Cyclones, didn't make the trip. wasn't going to play. It turned out to be the worst thing that could have happened to Oklahoma. Cyclones, 30-point underdogs. The Cyclones hadn't beaten the Sooners since 1990. And down to your third-string quarterback in Kyle Kempf. Yeah, Iowa State, I mean, they'll come to Norman and, you know, try to entertain us for three and a half hours, but the Sooners will show that they're the much better team. Iowa State wasn't just in Norman on Saturday to try to cover a 30-point spread. Matt Campbell's team did one hell of a job and deserved to win the game. Out physically, out mentally, out coaching, out doing Oklahoma every facet of the game. And for the Sooners, yeah, that team you saw in Columbus about a month ago against Ohio State, uh, that team you're, you're not going to see again this year. You're, you're not. Something happened in the last few weeks, and we thought, you know, against Baylor, yeah, the game was a little more exciting than Sooner fans would have cared for because, you know, the, the defense had some issues, and Sooners had a hard time putting away a winless Baylor Bear team. We thought, okay, that's just aberration, just a hiccup. No, Sooner team has a lot of problems. Because I'm convinced, and again, I give all the credit to the world to Iowa State, if these two teams play each other, the Cyclones and Sooners, nine more times, whether it's in Norman and Ames or in my front or backyard, Oklahoma's going to win and probably win conventionally. But it doesn't matter you know, how many times you play a team. It doesn't matter who's better. It doesn't matter sometimes even where you play them. If things happen in a certain way, and if so many things happen in a certain way, which it did for Iowa State, and believe me, they deserve to win this game, then an upset can occur. I mean, screw what Vegas had to say about this game. And again, you know, I fell for the bait as far as how terrific Oklahoma was this season, especially after that Ohio State game, thinking this is a special team. Special teams, like the Sooners, don't make mistakes like they made. You know, not that they committed a lot of penalties in this game, but just penalties at inopportune times. I mean, you got the game tied. Was I'm shocked it's tied between the Sooners and the Cyclones late. And you're going to have Iowa State third and long, and you commit a penalty away from the ball. There are other penalties, too. A costly pass interference penalty on an Iowa State touchdown, and I think that same drive, you know, they get called for for, for piling up or something like that. I've never even heard that penalty before. But it shouldn't, have, you know, it shouldn't have mattered. People are going to say, well, the refs hurt the Sooners. No, the Sooners hurt themselves. And then the only turnover of the game was Mammoth, with the Sooners trying to answer the Iowa State touchdown early in the third quarter on the zone read, the fumble near the goal line, and then not only that, Iowa State comes right back later. There, there were just so many things that had to fall in the lap of Iowa State, but Iowa State made their breaks today. And again, not only did they get the breaks, but they earned this game by the way that they played on both sides of the ball. The Sooners had a ton of yardage, but not enough touchdowns in this contest. Only seven points in the second half. That's a heck of a job by that Cyclone defense. They have national championship. Yeah, you, you can forget about it. And I'm sure the nation right now, I'm sure people in Austin and Stillwater are just laughing their heads off, and they should. And for by the way, before I go any further, for anybody out there who says, well, if Bob Stoops were the coach of the Sooners, this wouldn't have happened. That's an oversight, and that's wrong, okay? Bob Stoops, one of the greatest coaches we've seen in college football in quite some time. He'll be in the Football Hall of Fame, of course, uh, Tons of Big 12 championships and lots of wins and very few losses. But we forget, you know, that there were times in which Stoops' and Sooners teams lost games that they shouldn't have, okay? So give Lincoln Riley a break, okay? This was not the case of just a losing coach. This was a case of a losing team. The Sooners offensively might have moved the ball effectively, but didn't get touchdowns in that second half except on one occasion. Did not come through. Baker Mayfield, no interceptions, but did not come through. Beginning of the game looked fantastic. First 10 minutes, things are clicking, couldn't have gone any better. Up 14 to nothing. And then things started to change. What I thought was one of the key moments in this game, and the turning point perhaps, was with OU leading 14 to nothing, Iowa State thrown 25, third and 10, Cyclones have done nothing on offense, David Montgomery hasn't done anything so far running the ball. Well, Iowa State knew to not give up on Montgomery. After all, he was probably, other than Alan Lazard, maybe the most skilled player. Well, third and 10, smart play. 
to throw to Montgomery on the outside. Got some nice blocks. And it turned out to be about a 35- to 40-yard gain. And at that point, I thought Iowa State was getting some confidence and had an opportunity to maybe get some points off the drive, and that's what they did. But not only that, but we saw Joe Lanning play Ironman football for Iowa State. He went both ways. Of course, he's you know, one of the leaders on their defense as a linebacker, but he's a former quarterback as well, and at times we saw him come in in place of Kyle Kemp, the QB for Iowa State. And even though Lanning didn't do much statistically, he still showed the ability to run and pass, and I think having him out there on both sides of the ball showed his teammates that he was ready to lead, that they were perhaps ready for something really big that day. They only got three points on that drive, but there was at least something, and it gave them something to build upon, and then later they would get the ball and they would score a touchdown. So you know, that, I thought, was a big moment, was that big pass reception by Montgomery. He had another pass reception as well later in that half. So even though Montgomery wasn't hurting OU by running the ball, he was hurting them as a receiver. And then second half, another big moment after uh, OU had fumbled on the zone replay. Third and 12, Iowa State's got the ball at their own two-yard line, down by eight. A lot of teams in that situation would probably have said, okay, let's just get a few yards, and that way we're giving our punter at least a little bit of room to punt from the end zone. No. Matt Campbell says, you know what, we're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be Alan Lazard against whoever's covering him, which in this case was Jordan Thomas. And you notice that defenses now are really attacking the side of Jordan Thomas. It was the opposite last year, but this year they're showing a lot more respect to the other side where Parnell Motley occupies. They went to Thomas. Campbell knew that he was going to have a height advantage with Lazard against Thomas. And even though Lazard did nothing in the first half, no catches, he made his impact felt in the second half. And it was a huge reception of about 40 yards. And that was a big-time get-out-of-jail free card for the Iowa State offense because they were pinned deep. And they would eventually score. It was a 96-yard cumulative drive. And they would get the two-point conversion to tie it up. That was monstrous right there. So the center defense, you know, like I said, you know, in the first half, it wasn't too shabby. But in the second half, uh, it, it, was, it was just way too much. And they were getting run gouged a little bit. But they were giving up some big pass plays. The secondary just was not aggressive enough. And like I said, not too many penalties for the Sooners. But the penalties that they did get, a pass interference call, a penalty where they piled on, which would lead to a touchdown. And then, of course, like I said, game tied at 24 Late Iowa State driving. I'm sorry, tied at 31 late in Iowa State driving. Looks like you're going to have third and 10, but then that penalty away from the ball, a personal foul, automatic first down. The Sooners at that point were kind of digging their own grave in that situation. Offensively, I'll tell you one guy I was very impressed with with Oklahoma, Trey Sermon. I thought he played his heart out. We saw him play in that opening drive. Um, he wasn't in the first series, but he would play later in that possession and would score on a touchdown reception. And for the day, Sermon ended up having um, close to 100 yards rushing. Mayfield was not bad today, but could not uh, deliver in the clutch. And Kyle Kemp, the Iowa State quarterback, simply put, did. It, it, it's that simple. And Lazard with the game-winning reception. It, it, it was a game in which the Sooners self-inflicting wounds with the penalties, with that turnover. And again, in, in a game like this, Certain things had to happen in a certain way. David Montgomery had to be a major factor, and he didn't rush for hardly anything in the first half, but in the second half um, had about 50, 55 yards rushing. Lazard finally woke up, and Iowa State did a much better job on third and fourth down conversions in this game than they did against Texas. And for the Sooners, missing a field goal against special teams, that's where Iowa State had the advantage. They made all their field goal attempts. The Sooners missed their one and only attempt, which happened – early in the fourth quarter with the game tied. The Sooners were not always opportunistic. Iowa State definitely was. And a season that looked like could be a potential another Big 12 championship, which I guess could still be mathematically. But how does Oklahoma recover from something like this? Well, actually, that's not my job. That's Lincoln Riley and that coaching staff's job to try to piece together what to do now, and if I had to offer any advice, which I'm sure senior coaches and players don't want, you got to go back to the basics. Go back to the beginning and piece together a plan to get ready for the remainder of the season. Still seven games left. Um, the season, can it still be successful? Sure. Um, just like I would say after a huge Oklahoma win, you still have games left. I still say the same thing. But now the perspective, no question, changes because you got a blemish on your big 12 work. And by the way, um, only Baker Mayfield's second loss as a Sooner starting quarterback. 
And by the way, the nation's longest winning streak, it's history. The Big 12 winning streak, which went all the way back to Texas two years ago, uh, that's history as well. Sooners will get Texas next. The Longhorns will play uh, just a few hours from now against Kansas State. Um, Iowa State, do I think this team um, Do I think that this team is going to win the Big 12 or play the Big 12 championship game? No, of course not. But does Matt Campbell have this team going in the right direction? Absolutely they do. And keep in mind, they're just three wins now. They're three wins away from a uh, bowl bit. Okay, there's still a lot of games left to go, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something to build upon, and right now they're, they're building upon trying to play another game, trying to get to the postseason. And uh, there's no question that uh, that is a possibility now. Still a lot of games left in Iowa State. Uh, their program going in the right direction, and uh, Matt Campbell made a believer out of uh, everybody in the Big 12 and nationwide, for that matter, that Iowa State can play. And uh, for the Sooners, oh, yeah, the Red River rivalry, Texas, but after the shock of this game, after OU loses a, such a big favorite, um, for right now, I could give a shit about the Red River rivalry. Boomer Sooner.